So there's three kinds of vacancy that we're going to want to look at. We can take our current snapshot of the property today and see that there's no vacant units. And we can say that's a 0% vacancy factor. The problem is no appraiser or bank will ever go with that. So there's two other types of vacancies that happen. You're going to have a market vacancy, meaning the average vacancy rate for the market, just like we have average cap rates for a market, is going to be a certain vacancy rate. I was reading today that, although I was looking at a property this morning in Toronto, uh, or outside Toronto, I'm trying to remember the name of the, town, of the, uh, the suburb here. Anyways, it was saying that, it had, that they had used an 8% vacancy, even though they thought that was higher than the market vacancy rate. So what you'll need to do, and you can find out what the market vacancy rate is by, is by calling any lender who loans inside of that local market. And they're going to tell you what vacancy rate they use for underwriting. So now we've talked about two kinds of vacancies. Today's current vacancy rate, we have the market vacancy rate for what the market's doing and what they've determined as an average. And then you're going to take that 12-month trailing report and determine what the average vacancy has been over this property's 12 operating months of, uh, 12 historical months of operating, right? And so what we're going to do as underwriters, as analyzers, as investors, is we're going to use the highest vacancy of any of those three. Why? Because we are conservative investors, right? We want to make sure that we're going to not overstate or inflate the value of the property um, when we're about to buy it. In fact, we're going to use this information for our best negotiation. Right? I don't want to pay for what the vacancy is now. I want to pay for what the last 12 months have been. Mm -hmm.